Welcome back to the AI for Good Global Summit in Geneva on day four. Now, if there's a reason why we're here, it's partly down to the man who's in front of me right now. His name is Stephen Ibaraki. Hello. Hi. Um, if I say that we're partly here because of you, it's because you co-founded this whole summit to begin with. You're a futurist and you're also a venture capitalist. Um, so as you look at what's been achieved this week, how much would you say the progression has been in the, in the three years? Well, when you look at 2017, we had approximately 30 plus million reach. We had 70 plus speakers, 20 UN agencies. Uh, the second year, we had 150 speakers, 1.3 billion media reach, 150 speakers and 35 projects as outcomes. This year, we had 30, over 3,000 registrations. We have 300 speakers. We have all 37 UN agencies. It's incredible. And I know the reach will be over 2 billion. Um, when you say the reach, what do you mean by that? Just through the media pickup and the audiences that are following the event through, through all of the different UN channels and all of the stories that are being produced and so on. I mean, it's the first year that we, for example, we've had Microsoft as a keynote. Uh, we had the chairman of, of uh, Siemens as a keynote as well, you know, like Jean-Philippe uh, from Microsoft and so on. Uh, uh, incredible uh, support. It's the only interdisciplinary AI summit that combines government, industry, academia, and media, and UN agencies coming together to look at positive solutions for positive impact of AI. Why would you say it's going through a rapid rise in three years? Is it because people need to know more about AI? They're concerned about it? Can you tell me? People want to see the, the actual applications and how it can affect their lives in a meaningful way, see how the augmentation can be used in both developed and developing countries. And because the UN is a facilitation platform, you provide a very neutral, safe environment in, ter in terms of active discussions of all, what are the challenges, but what are also the opportunities and the meaningful solutions. For example, now, there's over 200 use cases on how AI could be applied to address the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals. Um, there's three words that, for me, I've heard a lot over this week that I didn't hear last year, I would say. It's gender, inclusion, and scaling up. Do you want to talk me through those? Well, AI is a, is a participation mechanism so that it can help to provide equity and fairness and equality and gender, and or gender neutrality in essence so that everybody can participate. You have this situation of scaling up where AI has penetrated every industry. For example, in the last quarter of 2017, it was available to every aspect of our lives. And increasingly, it's even available in chips and so on. So both developed and developing countries have this capability of being augmented and supported through AI and, and the, the other element you are mentioning. Another thing they talk about still is sharing the data lakes. That's got to be the most difficult thing, right? Because you've got to get businesses to agree to collaborate on data, which is power. Increasingly, there are programs for partnerships and so on uh, and data commons to share data, to make it available freely. There's quite a bit of open source data now being available and uh, international consortiums to provide data, uh, data for uh, free use and so on. You can also create synthetic and synthetic data where you get existing data and you can amplify and creating artificial versions of it. So, so looking ahead, um, where do you see things stay in the next three years from now? You're going to see, again, an incredible proliferation of AI in ways that you don't even see right now. A lot of people don't realize that AI is embedded into uh, email It's embedded to filter out you know, spam emails on credit card. You know, you get these messages saying somebody may be breaking into your account. That's, a, that's AI, a form of AI that's doing that. When you want to purchase products on the internet, that's AI that says, hey, I, should you be looking at some other products or other movies if you're sorting out movies? In, or even in your car, where it's doing some of the functions automatically, even though you don't have an autonomous vehicle, that's all AI. It's embedded everywhere. And in fact, let's look at it this way. When the first announcements came out about AI, uh, for example, where they can recognize images and there was these computing clusters by Google and so on, and you could uh, you know, have 20, 30 million dollars of computers and millions of data sets, uh, data um, points to image and recognize the end of popularity was cats. My phone here has a bionic chip, an A12 bionic chip. If you're looking at 30 million dollars, so it's 72 dollars. And this system can do five trillion operations per second. 
That's the kind of capability, and you're going to see that spread everywhere, increasingly so, helping us live better lives. We'll check back in three years' time and see. You're the futurologist. That was Stephen Ibaraki, who was basically the founder of this AI for Good Global Summit, talking to us here in Geneva. Thank you. It's a real pleasure. Thank you.